Hello. Um, thank you, Michael, and thanks to everybody for organizing this. Um, so I brought my forte piano. We have one time too many. Bring um, into the, into here. This is a an 18th century style instrument. This was a brand new baby when Mozart was a kid. That is the original was. Uh, this one is about 10 years old. That was made uh, by Norman Shepard and myself. It weighs about 150 pounds, 160 pounds, which of course is considerably less than its modern descendant, right? Which is like it come in at about 700 pounds. <clears throat> when Mozart was a young man, whenever he was on the road. Uh, at the age of, I don't know, four or five, his father discovered he had this mega genius on his hands. So he trotted him around the courts of Europe, and, and Mozart remember, could play just about anything upon first hearing that he could mimic it. He could, he could you know, play backwards, he could play upside down. <laughs> Sets of variations on melodies that he only heard once before, and that, that type of thing. We know from an account, though, that we, his mother was with him on tour. She was writing back home to the dad, and she said that. Often at these various courts, they have harpsichords. Remember, the harpsichord has been around for hundreds of years. But she goes on to say that when Wolfie is presented with a forte piano and he sits down to play it, he, you know, he really blows them away. You know, loosely translated from the German. But, <laughs> but, but the, the, the upshot was is that the forte piano, with its new color of sound, was really where Mozart was at, and it was it was a new instrument. Instead of plucking the strings like the harpsichord did and give you this celestial clarity, you have for the first time hammers, leather covered tiny hammers that are hitting the string and affords you dynamics. Okay, that's why it's called the forte piano, the loud saw. And of course, everything sounds better in Italian than it does in English. <laughs> and that's why it's called that. So, um, that's right. Or, you know, so anyway, so that, but it's, it's interesting, and of course it still has, a, you know, there are vestiges of the harpsichord that are still here that are so, were so useful to Mozart. One of them is, is that because of the thin wire, the high notes are going to sound really high, and the low notes are going to sound really low. And that gives Mozart the ability to have his opera cast, which is really what all he wanted to do is to write for singers. You know, so if you listen, I'll just play this little riff from the Queen of the Night in every octave, and you can see how different things get. That's the highest note he ever wrote for the human voice, and that's also the highest note of his instrument. If you take it down an octave, it's a completely different singer. I mean, they may be neighbors, but their voting records are diametrically <laughs> opposed. You know, so it's right. I mean, again, just listen. Here she is, connected to the stars versus, and then once you get to the middle, there is a sex change. You know, <laughs> so suddenly it's a man starting right where men begin to sing. The forte piano turns into a man. Which see, this is a woman. Right on middle C, you hear that? The do, the, that's the male gene kicking in. And, and it's just gonna get more brilliant as it goes down. So what? It's really, really, really dumb, right? And then, you can see why he didn't write it as a bass aria, I mean. So anyway, when young Mozart sits down at the forte piano, he's got an opera cast under his finger. He's got all sorts of women and all sorts of men that can talk to each other. And also he can do orchestral effects too, partly assisted by the very hidden pedal, which is not a pedal, but which is a knee lever that you'll see me lifting here. So, it still go. I'm lifting and if I let go, then the sound stops like that. So this is the way they did it for about 50 years until people got so obsessed with the sound of the pedal that they gave it to the foot. <laughs> this is the fantasy in D minor. It's a, a four page, it's a very short piece, and uh, it has kind of everything that Mozart's interested in between the dark and the light. It's all compressed into four pages, and I thought it'd be a nice way to, to talk to him. A fantasy means that he probably improvised it one night. He improvised maybe thousands of these, and he wrote down three, so far as we know. But he did like the party, you know. Um, but this is, this is one of them. <laughs> <laughs>